Hey guys, welcome back to this week's vlog. Today I'm joined by a special guest who I'm going to introduce in a minute. We're going to be talking about art and the relationship it has with music. Some of you will know that I am an independent artist and I work full time as a musician, an artist, songwriter and art has always been something I've been really inspired by personally and I'm so excited about this conversation because I think you're going to get loads out of it. So today we're going to focus on the relationship between art, design and music specifically but I'm sure if you're watching this and you're not a musician but you're kind of interested in music or art, this will apply for you too. I'm joined today by Maddie Harms. Oh, hello. hello, all the way from the US, specifically St. Paul, is that right? That's correct, in Minnesota. We have never met in person and we still are kind of not meeting in person, but this is the first time we've spoken and seen each other. Maddie has sometimes joined me on Twitch for stuff and we've had loads of conversations via email and Instagram, but this is the first time I've heard your voice. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's fun to be able to finally talk face to face. The really exciting thing has been that we've been working on a bunch of Pyramid Park projects. It started off with the Fez and Pyramid Park cartoon series which was epic and so many people loved it. I had a lot of people commenting about it and Fez said to me that it's probably the best remix release he's ever ever had in his life so well done. Thank you, wow. <laughs> So we've worked on a couple of projects. There's another one in the pipeline for a new EP as well, which I cannot wait to see come up with. So welcome, Maddie. It's really great to have you. Glad to be here. So my first question is, can you remember when we connected? I'm trying to wrap my brains for the moment exactly, but maybe you've got a better idea than me. If I remember rightly, I think the first time we connected was, um, well, back in March, I remember getting like a follower request on Instagram from you. and. <laughs> I remember being like, I think I've seen this guy before on Spotify, but I don't really know who he is. And yeah, sure, I'll let him follow me. I um, eventually, you know, followed you back and started listening to your music. And I was like, wow, this guy's really great. I feel like uh, once COVID started and artists were starting to do live streams, I started watching yours on YouTube and Twitch and yeah, and kind of started getting to know you uh, through that. And in May, you asked me to do the, my first project for you, the Never Let Me Down release, um, or remix, I should say. Um, and yeah, that was super exciting. I remember I kept looking at your artwork and being mm -hmm. like, I wonder if I should ask her to get involved, uh, just like the kind of stuff you were posting at the time. And you had, in my view, a really unique style of illustration that kind of was really inspiring to see. And it felt like there was a story attached to who you were as well. Like you were not only, um, here's my artwork, go look at my artwork, like my artwork, but you're really investing yourself into the whole thing. And, and I love that when people kind of share themselves and are willing to be a little bit vulnerable. I don't know whether you realized you were doing that at the time. I think I think I sort of realized <laughs> that. I mean, I definitely do pour myself and my story into my artwork and it's definitely inspired by things that have taken place and things that God is teaching me. That, that would make sense, yes, that, <laughs> that it tells a story and um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your background in design and how you kind of got involved in becoming a designer. I've always been artistic, like ever since I was very little. So I was drawing and I was experimenting all growing up with like different forms of artwork, like photography, playing with Photoshop a lot. I loved experimenting. When I was in high school, I started noticing graphic design and getting in interested in that. And I remember just learning all I could with the resources I had and just like trying out new things. And I remember at one point I, um, I tried opening an online shop selling digital prints, but it didn't it didn't go over very well. I probably had like two customers and they're both related to me. I did a few projects for my dad. A lot of practice projects for people I know um, until eventually. So as soon as I graduated high school, I was like, okay, so I'm not really sure what I want to do. I know I want to do something creative, but I'm not sure what. I was trying to figure out what my options were for graphic design because at that point, all I knew was um, like branding and logo design. And I was like, I'm not sure if I want to do that. So I was kind of not sure where I wanted to go. So I ended up taking three years studying theology and it was, it was a good season. It was not much time for creativity at all, but it was there that I realized how much I appreciated the arts. As soon as I got finished with my program at that one school, I was kind of like, okay, so I know I want to do something artistic, not 
quite yet sure what I want to do. I remember I was, you know, just looking for any random job to like kill time until I figured out what I wanted to do. And one day I was riding in the car with my dad and he was like, you, you like art and you're good at graphic design. You should study graphic design. And I was like, I don't know if I want to go back to school though. And he was like, you should learn the craft. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, um, hmm, let me think about that. So I thought about it, prayed about it. The very next day I applied to Bethel University for the graphic design program and got accepted the next day and literally jumped right into orientation the following weekend. It was a really good decision. I'm very thankful that I decided to jump right in as like crazy and not on the radar that it was. I'm really thankful for those next few years and everything I learned there. And um, it was there that I discovered how much I actually loved graphic design and how fascinating it is. I remember sitting in one of the first classes, I had just met my professor. I was like, wow, she's awesome. <laughs> like, can't wait to learn from her. And like, she was just teaching like about the basics of graphic design. And I'm just like sitting there just like fascinated and taking it all in. And I'm just like okay yes I think I think I'm where I need to be I think this is this is the answer a few years later I graduated COVID style in my living room watching a live stream <laughs> not what I expected I remember finishing all that online ceremonial stuff and sitting in my room being like okay okay god now what <laughs> And then four days later, you message me and like, hey, can you design for the Never Let Me Down? So yeah, that's kind of the short story of my background in design and how, how I discovered my passion there. And yeah. I, I don't know what you think about this, but certainly in music, it's not seen as a career option, um, not for generations before. But I think in this kind of time period, anything can be a career because anything is possible it's hard it's harder than doing a job in many ways but it is the possibilities are endless you just have to get started and be determined to keep going i think yeah absolutely i'm really thankful that these days more of the creative fields like music and illustration and um, things like that are becoming more like people are respecting them as legitimate jobs because they take work it's not just sitting at a desk drawing away I mean it is that but it's also like keeping track of your hours and like uh, all sorts of just business related things that people don't really see it definitely is hard work I'm thankful that in this era more and more people are starting to realize that you know having to produce the goods time and time again like is you're on a deadline and you have to create something and it's got to be done that takes skill and determination as well yeah so you've worked on several projects with me now and some upcoming things as well can you talk to us a little bit about your approach to each of those projects and what you've enjoyed about each one so the first project I did for you was um kind of a whole bunch of work for the Never Let Me Down remix by Fez. You had seen a poster that I'd created a while back. It was kind of the four um, vertical bars design. I remember you sent it to me and you're like, hey, so do you mind adapting this design? And it was super interesting to like take, the poster originally was like very, I don't know, just like kind of a very calm aesthetic and like very toned down color schemes. And there was like some other I don't know, collage-ish sort of visual elements that we got rid of and replaced with four triangles. It was a fun challenge to kind of take that and like remix it with like the neon colors and like the triangles. Also did a whole bunch of content for your social media. So I did like some Instagram stories and um, a couple of GIFs. Oh, I love that. That moment when you sent me an email and you're like, so I've done all this work for you, but I've also done this for you if you want it. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> yeah, I was noticing. Um, so when I was, I think I was creating those like still images for Instagram and it was like one section, like each of the four bars I kind of made into like a little square format with like the little sky background and like the triangle. And I was like, hmm, if I put these all together, I can make gifts out of them. And so I was like, figured I might as well surprise you and just do it. And that's a great thing that you did because do you know what? That's the sort of thing that designers don't think about doing. And that's the sort of thing that gets you more work. Like for me, I'm like, I want to work with her again. She's above and beyond, you know, and that's so credit to you for doing that. Thanks. 
<laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, I actually, and intentionally, I set the speed of the frame to, there was this like recurring loop is the words you can never really sped up really fast and repeating. And I, I uh, set the speed of the frames to this, that speed so that when it's played along with the music, it'll match up if you play them both at the right time. It's kind of tricky, but um, it's fun to like, kind of like include those little details. And like, um, it was fun seeing, um, seeing you post it on Instagram with the music eventually. It was like, oh, it worked. And yeah, I also ended up making some t-shirt designs. Um, and then last but not least, the nine part cartoon series which was personally my favorite part. It was really challenging because, you know, I didn't really know you guys. So I'm like, okay, so here I am taking two real people and making them cartoons, don't know much about their personalities. I ended up going to your YouTube channel and like watching all your videos until I kind of thought, okay, I think I have a good handle on your personality. I was like watching those um, studio recording vlogs a lot. You'd written the text, I did the layout and the illustration, and it was fun to be able to like, draw the scenes through my imagination but I was also kind of like oh, I hope that everything is accurate and like I remember I was also like right and left I was like please feel free to like ask to change anything I remember being like is the spelling and grammar correct like British English <laughs> <laughs> yeah, learned a lot. Really enjoyed working on the comic series and it was fun to see it all on your Instagram. People absolutely loved that and I think it, I think you told me sometime later like it was that kind of project that helped you get other work. It kind of, I don't know, I guess because I was tagging you in every single post every day. You're getting a lot of hype but you never know, do you? You, you don't know what, what what leads to the next thing and I think that's what's so amazing about working with other people is that collaboration and relationship is actually really healthy isn't it yeah yeah I definitely I definitely do think that that project really helped that was my first album cover design and from there I had so many more people come and be like hey can you do an album cover for me and so thank you first of all <laughs> like it really helped my business <laughs> So two more projects after that, is that right? Two yeah. more? Yeah. Yeah, the next one was a t-shirt design for your Patreon backers and the, the design was based on some lyrics from your song, You Know I Know, Your Hand Upon My Head, My Heart Upon Your Sleeve. You'd sent me a sketch of what you wanted, this rectangular frame with like an arm reaching down and holding somebody's head with a little heart on the wrist. I was like, okay, I need a hand model. I asked my sister, hey, do you want to be a hand model for me? And so I have her like pose her arm on this spherical object. I take a selfie <laughs> at a three quarter angle, fuse the two together, trace over it, redraw the, the image. So basically your Patreon backers are wearing uh, me and my sister. It was super fun. And I loved the kind of that, you know, neon 3D grid aesthetic that you wanted to go for. And yeah, that was my first time doing a design fully digital with like, like an intense, like with the crisp lines and all that. So definitely like took a lot of practice. Really happy with how it turned out. And this, this is a question for you maybe that wasn't pre-prepared but does it help when someone sends you sketches or is it actually like oh no that's not helpful at all or this is really rubbish I don't have a clue what he's trying to draw I think it's pretty helpful actually because then I know what exactly you want and you know the more information I can get about what the client wants the better I find it really helpful that you've been like here's exactly what I want here's a sketch um here's the layout like yeah keep keep going with that like that's okay. super helpful <laughs> your final design that you did for me so far was the day and night remix which was a bit of a surprise project for me andy lowe who very kindly backed me on a kickstarter project before um he got in touch and said hey i love your song day and night i want to remix it for you i initially thought well yeah okay i could maybe put it up give it to my patreon backers and you know, not thinking it would be a proper release or anything. It turned out I really enjoyed what he did. And then I was like, ah, we actually need some artwork super quick. I messaged you on a whim saying, hey, any chance? <laughs> Tell me about that one. He sent me another sketch of a globe and you're like, hey, here's the idea of what I want. 
I want it to be kind of like at this angle and like have half of it neon blue and half of it neon pink on a black background. I took it into Adobe Illustrator. It took forever for me to get the like latitude and longitude lines right. To be honest, it was kind of frustrating, but I was like, hey, like this, once I get this right, this is going to look super cool. Like, so I finally got it right. I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> I was just, I was surprised that it turned out the way it did. It was super cool to be able to work on that, even like so, like last minute. So why do you think artwork is really important for the artist or the musician in these times? So that's a really good question. Here's, here's what I think. Not always, but often the artwork is the first impression of the song scrolling through Spotify, you're looking at album covers. For me personally, if an album cover looks really bad, I'm not really likely to click on the song and press play. If it looks really good and I've like never heard of the artist before, it's like, hey, I want to I wanna check this out. Like good artwork draws you in. I also like, for me as someone who's been doing a few album covers, I personally like to make the artwork reflect the song itself. I really am all about taking the song and then translating that audio or that sound into visuals as best I can. The art is the packaging, the music is the product, and packaging is important. I would say um, it's equally as important. I'd say art, video, music all equal you know people don't consume music on its own these days they consume it with something else usually with video and often with art and so with the three things you have to you know i was thinking about a design you're going to be working on for me um for my new project and thinking about the video for that very song which you haven't heard yet and i was like right this has got to line up with what we're going to do art wise now because it's going to be the first single how do we do that how do I plan this video so it links in some way? So absolutely very important. So I'm really interested in what you're looking for when an artist contacts you. I've noticed like you like to ask quite a lot of questions with me so that you can kind of clarify what I want, um, which I personally find really helpful because it helps me to kind of actually ask myself those questions and be like, well, what do I really want with this? But what are you looking for? I trying to get to know them, trying to like get a look inside their head and like kind of understand how they think. And um, if I can understand how they think, I can better understand maybe what they're looking for in, in a design. I also ask questions to kind of help them start thinking to like, if they are like, hey, so I've had this idea, but it's not fully formed. Maybe I'm open to possible other directions. I will take that idea that they have and be like, okay, so here are some questions based on this idea. And they're like very specific kind of questions. So like, for example, this is not a music related example, but for one project for a client, I was, I was doing a logo for somebody's bakery business and it's located in New Zealand. She told me a bit about like culture, the culture that she's from. And so I asked her a lot of questions about New Zealand and New Zealand culture. And like, what does that sort of cultural art look like? What are the people like there? Like, what do they value, et cetera, et cetera. Like things that are related and some things that aren't quite related, but all of them can kind of help me get a better understanding of um, what I'm about to design for and maybe hopefully provide something that's accurate to her culture. I try to like ask a lot of questions so that I can do the best that I can for them and give them something that they're happy with. So for those watching, maybe there's some people who are interested in getting involved in design or they're looking to do it as a career. Could you tell us what you think their first few steps should be with their early clients? When you when you have clients like asking you, hey, do you, I don't know, do you do cover artwork? Um, tell them about your hourly rates or talk about money first so that they never assume that without talking about money that they're going to pay you because... <laughs> Um, I worked on a project once for somebody else and um, I was like, hey, so I, I'm assuming that they probably, I posted on my Instagram, like, here are my hourly rates. And so I assumed like, oh, he's probably seen it. He'll probably be like, hey, how much do I owe you at the end? Um, I learned the hard way that day. And um, I would highly recommend before you agree to do something, be like, hey, yeah, I'd love to do that. Here is how much I charge per hour or like whatever model of like pay you go for. I feel like that's kind of obvious information and I am still um, 
pretty new at design and so I'm sorry if that's like too obvious. Not at all, um, it's really good advice. Yeah. I find it really difficult in the art world, I include music in that, that money is quite a difficult thing to talk about. People don't necessarily appreciate how much things cost or the time it takes to do things. So I think you're absolutely right. I remember deciding this year, I, I would get people wanting to talk to me and like ask me questions about stuff or want to know how I do certain things as an indie artist. And I wish I'd said, just watch my vlogs. <laughs> like the information is there, but I didn't. I'd have calls with people sometimes for an hour. Sometimes I have an hour call with someone and it would be like, they didn't even ask me a question. They just talked to me and I'm like, so you've just wasted an hour of my day, which is really an hour and a half of my day. And that's like really precious to me. So I, I ended up saying to people, this is my rate if you want to talk to me um, and for advice. I will give you absolutely everything I can in an hour's call, but this is what it would cost. Amazingly, people come back to you either like, sure, how about half an hour? Could you split it 50%? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. Or, no, I'm all right, thanks. All right, great. That just sifts through some of the stuff that, you know, I don't mind talking to anyone. But when it becomes something where, yeah, your time is precious. I've been there. I think all creatives can relate to that. <laughs> In your opinion, do you think that since streaming platforms have kind of taken over as the dominant way that people listen to music now, um, do you think artwork has changed because of that? I'd say I'd notice a little bit of change, like from before the time that, before um, streaming services were a thing and before iTunes, um, when everything was like physical CDs, I remember it would have the artwork, but it would also have a bunch of information. Like it would for sure have the title of the album and, um, the artist's name and maybe like the logo of the record label that released the album and it might even have like some if like on older artwork they might have even the track list on the front of the cover which is interesting very interesting design choice um and let's see yeah later i guess with itunes like once digital music started becoming a thing i've noticed that um and even with spotify now and like now that Spotify is a thing and more, more and more people are producing their own music, kind of anything within reason goes. Um, it's, it could be something really, really complex or it could be just a simple photo, you know, as long as it's like 3000 by 3000 pixels, like it can work. What do you hope to communicate through your art? And I guess also a kind of tag on question to that is, do you leave any like bits of yourself on the artwork, like your hallmark as like, this is who I am. Something I try to communicate in my artwork is joy. Um, I feel like this year we all needed some joy. I mean, my, my style of artwork has always been pretty joyful and almost people call it childlike in a sense, but they would say it's childlike, but it's not childish. And it's, it's still something that an adult can, can enjoy, but like, it's also kind of like, nostalgic in a way it kind of like brings out maybe the younger side of you and kind of is like um people would tell me like this reminds me of like some 90s show i used to watch as a kid and i'd be like wow i consider that a compliment like that's amazing um, <laughs> but wow. um yeah i definitely i definitely want to communicate joy and lately peace and i want to communicate in my artwork things that the lord has been teaching me lately so like i don't know lately i've been doing a lot of work kind of just about dreams and surrender and kind of just like that tension of having dreams but also surrendering them to the Lord and that is where you find your freedom and, and when you trust him with those dreams like let him take them you know whichever way he wills like that's the best way to live. I really love taking things that he's been teaching me and just like in some way or another kind of like making a piece of artwork based on what I've been thinking about lately. I really hope that, that that's communicated through my work. I try. I usually try to like say something about it in the caption, maybe like explain in a few sentences my reasoning behind the artwork. I want to use my work in a way that brings joy to people but also points them to the source of joy, Jesus. So how can we find you? Where, where's the best place to find your work? I'm on Instagram as Maddie K. Harms. You can find my artwork there. I'm also on Behance. Um, that might not be relevant to you unless you're a designer, um, <laughs> but also Maddie K. Harms. I guess everywhere I'm Maddie K. Harms, so it's pretty, 
pretty straightforward. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you guys have found it interesting, particularly if you've been involved in art in some way, shape or form. And for those of you who are fellow artists or musicians, you know, it's so great to be able to chat about this stuff. And I'm really glad that we've been able to have this conversation today. So a big thank you for joining us all the way from the US. And for those of you who have watched to the very end, please do subscribe to this channel, like it if you enjoyed the content. And don't forget I'm on Patreon. I would love you to be part of that exclusive community of amazing people where you get extra Pyramid Park stuff from me and things like early releases and music that is not out there to the general public. So go check that out as well. All the links are below. Take care guys, thanks again for watching, see you next week.